sold. 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 And sold. What's up guys, Street Tequisha Collectibles. Welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, we're going to the Orange Coin Show, dropping off some things we sold, and also trying to show you guys some things that we buy, how we buy them, what we buy them for, and how we interact with dealers. Let's get this video started. Hey Case, where are we, man? We are at Frontier Waste Solutions. Why are we at Frontier Waste? We are not sponsored by <laughs> Frontier Waste Solutions. <laughs> Why are we at Frontier Waste Solutions? Because we were driving and the car shut off. Yep, now we're waiting on a tow truck so we can go home and maybe get another car or, because we have six of them, or, uh, you know, go back to the drawing board and not go to the show. I didn't build, I didn't build this business. God built this business. This is God's business. The car shut down on you and you go onto the internet and YouTube and you determine what the problem is. So they say that the that the AM2 fuse blows if a part, which is down here, that delivers coolant to the inverter system blows. You can't smell it, but I can smell the burning because it, it shorts out. The AM2 fuse is the second one down. We're gonna pull it. Pulled it, I'm gonna replace it, and you will see you start to smoke. The inverter pump is on fire. It is on fire and it needs to be replaced. The inverter pump is one of the major issues in these Gen 2 Priuses, which it probably hasn't been changed before, so it's about time after 180,000 miles. Alrighty, so we're sorting a little bit here. As you can see, the countertops are a little full. Casey's uh, sorting Indian head scents. That's fun. And then what I'm going to show you is some cool stuff that we found in uh, in the collection. The better raw stuff. So a lot of the more crappier raw stuff. You know, the stuff that's mainly 90% or date sorted or coal buffaloes or dated buffaloes. And we have, you know, basically everything else here. But the good stuff has to be put in its own bag. And then has to be priced accordingly as well. So... Some better date mercury dimes down here some of this stuff is just for shows you know like if people want to buy stuff for their book got a 21 walker in there i think a 21s as well and i'm gonna try to find real quick 27p in there you can also see a 38 walker i think it's a 38d right there 1904s morgan dollar just a little bit better than coal. You don't want to put that stuff in the coal pile. 94.0 Morgan dollar. I think at any grade, this is about 30 or 40 bucks. Uh, what else? 83S and uh, VF, lightly cleaned. And we have some better large scents, most of them with corrosion and stuff, but you can see that just hanging out there. Okay, it took us a moment. We finally found it. 1946. Walking Liberty Half. And it's the only date that has a double die reverse that really has any amount of money to it. This one is a double die reverse. And uh, yeah, this one probably would be like 40 or 50 bucks when it's listed, but not too bad for looking through a ton, a ton, a ton of junk silver trying to find something like this. And uh, you flip over 140, you know, 100 1946 walkers and you might find one double die reverse and uh, this this is the one we found but like I said we have to now read two by two all these reprice them all regrade them all and then sell them for a profit so just a little bit of behind the scenes alright guys so we just got in some really cool ten dollar Indians we're gonna talk about them briefly because it's an important lesson that we all should learn about pricing coins that really deserve a lot of money so this is a 1916 S $10 Indian, it's great, Mint State 62 by PCGS, it is CAC approved. And so we ended up getting a call from a guy 
His name is Gary. He's up in Wisconsin. He's 85 years old. He didn't really collect coins, but they were passed down to him. And so now he was wanting to kind of get our opinion. So he gave us a call and he said, I went to a local dealer and he said that the CAC sticker on this coin means absolutely nothing. So that kind of raised a red flag with me. I believe Gracie on this coin is 3840 or something like that. And I think with the CAC sticker, it's around 4500 And so I think the dealer was trying to maybe lowball him, probably buy some stuff super cheap. They probably were hearing Gary out and saying, man, I probably could size this guy up and get a good deal and buy these tough Indians. And so he gave us a call and we ended up offering him as much money as possible, paid more than anybody else. And he not only sent us this coin, but he also sent us about, I think, what, three or four more better $10 Indians. I'm going to show you them right now, but it's always good to pay strong on coins that are extremely tough because that's what's fair. That's the way you should do it. So this one we ended up getting from a subscriber, a longtime customer of ours. This one's not a part of the deal, but it is a 1910 D $10 Indian grade AU58 CAC. Extremely tough to find in Rattlers, and so we had to pay a pretty strong premium for this coin, but still very nice. Now let's move on to some of these better dates. Like we were referring to before, the 16S is very tough to get, especially CAC approved, and there's a big jump for that sticker. And so we buy a lot of CAC approved coins, and we pay a lot of money for them. And so just a phenomenal coin to be able to offer. We do have a lot of more common coins, but this one definitely stands out from the rest. We have a 1908D $10 gold piece. It's uh, with motto. And, uh, you know, overall a nice looking original coin. And uh, very happy to have this one because, once again, this is another tough date. I think the person that passed these down to him were trying to uh, assemble a set. And they were starting off with kind of the best coins first. Here's another tough coin, 1908 no, uh, $10 Indian No Motto. And it's Great Mint State 62. We just had these one of these about a month ago. And this one is now back in stock. We actually sold one in a PCGS holder, and then this one was offered to us about a week later. Got the deal done, and now we have this one available. Here's another tough date, 1911D, graded AU55. I think one of these on eBay just sold for over four grand, just because of how tough these are. I think the mintage is just over 30,000, and a lot of people are looking for this date. And here is a 1913 $10 Indian, Gorgeous luster, flashy coin, and uh, very tough in Mint State 64. I think the last one without a sticker sold for about 4000 And uh, we are going to be offering this one much cheaper for you guys on AcousticCollectibles.com. You ready, Case? Yep. Mighty Forerunner today. I know this is unlocked. What's going on? Alright, brother. Good What's to see that? You. Not much. I was watching one of your videos again last the other night. Cool. Thank you. What's up, young man? There he is. How you doing, brother? Doing good, brother. Did you good get your car fixed? Uh, just jumped in another one, I think. That's that's the normal. Uh, <laughs> if something breaks down, you just gotta get well, into a new morning, one. I was looking at uh, YouTube stuff, and you had a video, but you said it was uh, delayed because of. The car breaking down. Hey, car. You're, you're Casey, right? <laughs> yes, sir. I'm right, Casey. Please nice to meet you, right? Buddy. You want us to show you those coins real yeah, quick? Yeah, what's happening? How you doing? Drew, Casey, Ricky, everything good? Ricky Bobby, yes, doing good? I didn't expect y'all this early. Yeah, you're trying to knock things out early, I guess. This is the first time we've set up, me and my cousin. Oh, nice. Over the years, we've done some upgrading, accumulating. Accumulated stuff we really don't need, so we thought we'd try to. Well, let me call that down for you. I'm sure I will be. You know what you're asking times face on a lot of this? These. Uh... I was asking 22 times face. Gotcha. Except for these, the warnings. I was getting. Uh, I'll have them for forty dollars a roll. Okay, something for me to think that's about. Quite a, that's quite a bit below milk. Yeah. What it? What? Somebody told me a guy's got a coin shop south of New Orleans. Right. Kenner. 
Rick. Yeah. Rick. Okay. He told me that's what he gets for him. Twenty two down the face. The other day at his shop. Well, yeah, especially in this well, in this market it's kind of any man's number, you know. It's right. kind of tough to gauge it because silver's gone up like, you know, a dollar fifty in three or four days and then But I would go twenty down the face. Okay. Something for me to think about for sure. How long have y'all been doing this? Since the basically the first day of of of, of COVID, basically, so were 2020. Or were y'all collecting coins before? Not really. Not really. Nope. Damn, y'all's knowledge is something else in a short period of time, then. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Just that's all I've been basically been doing since the beginning of COVID. So. Yeah. You know. COVID, you had a lot of time to stay at home and study. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, you have to make something of yourself when you have to graduate college, and you know. And, uh, you know, your parents are like, well, if you don't make this much money a month doing coins, you need to go get a real job. So you have to prove to them that you're not, you know, wasting your time. So. Because everybody else was getting a job and grabbing a desk and, you know, so. I'm very pleased. Wonderful. It's good to hear. Pleasure doing business Yes, sir. Pleasure doing business with you. I don't know how rushed y'all are. If y'all gonna hang around and try to buy something, or y'all... <laughs> yeah, I think we might have missed out on some stuff yesterday, but that's okay, you know? Right. Do you mind if I ask you about some coins you have? Just wondering what you have on your 66 star here. Has the show been good for you? Do you know what you have on it? Or do I have to just pull it off on the... What is it? Just wanted to see what you might have on this one. Yeah, it's got a star. That star means it's almost another grade, I think, is what the star means. Yeah, or it's flashy type of thing, you know? Yeah. But it's all good now. Just make sure you're not up against it. Yeah, I didn't do it. Oh, it's alright. Yeah, yeah 4.75 on it. Okay. That one might be too far out of my range on that one. Get that set back in there for you. You mind if I ask you about one more coin? Go ahead. It's just going to be this uh, this Mercury dime. This is way better. I mean, considering. Thank you so much. Do you know what you might need on this one by chance? Sir? Do you know what you might need on that one by chance? It's 300. Okay, that's your best price on it? Oh, I could probably come off a little. Say 250. That should be fine. Yeah, 250 is fine on that one. Relationships can be tricky. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that, that it. Evil? Yes, yeah. sir. Okay. Did you find anything cool yesterday? Well, I was. I bought uh, an '86 O Morgan. In they have a graded mint state '60. Mm -hmm. If you looked at it, you'd go, "That's a two for sure," which you know doubles the price. Right. The value of the coin, and then I bought a uh, bought an 80 an 86. Of, I bought um, oh, no, a 94 0 in 60 in an old annex holder. Well, so far, it's not bad. Sometimes they're undergraded, or sometimes it's they're undergraded. sometimes they're overgraded. Yeah, this one's kind of undergraded. That's good. I'm just set up the PCGS and have them cross it, see if I'll upgrade it too. Yeah. I just bought that coin yesterday, and I just got that one back from CAC, the 92 
I had a dealer recently he wanted me to send something to PCGS. He's like, this uh, 11D, strong D, you want to send it to PCGS? I'm like, sure. We both thought it was AU and came back 62. And I'm like, oh, that's $10,000 some uh, real money right there. Well, it's like, I think 7850 is bid or something. And then, yeah. And then if it's stickers, it's like 10 grand, but... Yeah, waiting on the ten grand thing. Your well, your actual accuracy is what what level on sending in. If you, if you could choose the corn, not it's like fifty five or sixty percent. Sixty percent. Because sometimes when you have a coin, you just you just submit it. You know, yeah. if you lose sixteen dollars, or you're gonna gain eight hundred dollars, it's just. What, what about this? Oh, it belongs to him. Uh -huh. Either that or he found it on the top of my case. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it was. Uh, well, you had a, and he had been buying this stuff to, uh, to the, from this outfit. They call him on the phone and send him a coin. They fought with an American Express card. And was, yeah. He had spent like one hundred and fifty-two thousand dollars. Told me again, I, I got all this gold. I mean, I've been putting it away. And I'm ready to sell it. And, okay. We'll come over and look at it. So we went over and looked at it. And it was all this modern. He only had one true numismatic coin, and that was a, a saint. That was a 1909 uh, over eight AU58. That's the only <laughs> collectible coin he had. All the rest, you know, they're like yeah, a proof silver eagle with a proof uh, buffalo, you know, or Canadian proof coin. Yeah, and, and he paid paid like you know twelve thousand dollars for it. You know, that kind of. He had uh, he paid he paid like nine grand for the same. Wow. So Ed and I went over there and it worked up the number and told him fifty two thousand dollars we're doing for it. You know, I can't accept that. Okay. Call the people that you bought this shit from, see if they'll buy it back. So I saw him a couple weeks later and he goes, I'm ready to do that deal. <laughs> well, you know, we went back over and looked at it again, and it's like I fifty-one thousand. It's like I told, like I told him. I said, "Listen, you know, he was pretty upset when we told him what we'd yeah, pay yeah, for." Yeah, you know, yeah. he was I said, insulted. I said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." He was insulted. I said, "I said, look, we're not the bad guys. We're we're not the guys that sold you this stuff." Yeah. I said, "The bad guys are the guy that sold you stuff." I said, "He said they were probably very nice to you, very friendly." But they didn't tell you the truth. Right. And I said, I told him, I said, they did not tell you the truth. I said, I'm telling you the truth. This is what this stuff is worth. Yeah. I said, I said, we're going to make, we're going to buy, if we buy this stuff from you, we're probably going to make three or four thousand dollars. Yeah. I said, we're not going to make, we're not going to make fifty thousand dollars. We're not going to make twenty thousand. We're going to make, we're going to make five or seven. Se Seventy five thousand dollars. We're going to make, we're going to make five or six percent. I right. said, we're, that's what we're going to make. I said, that's, and, and I said, we're fine with that. I said, we're fine with that. But the guys that sold this to you, they were making 300%. Right. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. We're not going to do that. Morning, Dickie. Hello, how you doing today, Rick? Doing very well. How you doing? Good, thank you. Do you mind if I take a look at a coin here yeah, real quick? Right Appreciate it. Yeah, one that? penny. It's a refund. See? Sears and Roebuck, not good for more than one dollar. This refund voucher. That's a refund voucher for a penny. <laughs> what do you think of that uh, 42 over one as far as how it's graded? Oh. It's got a lot of luster to it still. It's you got know? a ton of luster. I've looked at... Uh, a lot of auction sites and stuff. I looked at 62s, and it's as nice as any 62. Uh, 
and the luster is just amazing for for that grade. Yeah. And I've had thoughts of cracking it out and sending it back. But PCGS has become so fluky with what they do. Now. Oh. I want five bucks for that. <laughs> yeah, this is my last uh, hoorah with uh, PCGS. I had this coin, VF35, cleaned. Look at the uh, reverse on that and see if that looks like a VF35. It's got almost a full horn there, right? Oh, it's a solid full horn. It, uh, yeah. in, in color, it's uh, it's an AU coin. I cracked it out and sent it back. They sent it back to me and said, false dies. Wow. Now, I don't know what a false die is. Have y'all ever heard the term? Sometimes they cut two coins in half and put them together, something like that, but I don't know anything else other than that. So No, it, it wasn't that, but it, it was authenticated as real, but the right. false dies, that was a new term on me. Yeah, I've never actually heard of false dies before. And that's what they put on the, the tag. Unfortunate. Yeah. Oh, well. The way it goes, I guess. You never know with them. Better let you guys get back to it. I appreciate right. you letting me take a look. Y'all have a good one. Yes, sir. Sure, thank you. I Do you mind if I pull something out, Ed, just yeah, to look yeah, at it? Go ahead. Just be careful. So light and get it. Sounds good. I used to do paper. I mean, I did it before. I didn't. 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 I What's your favorite ancient coin in this uh, hole? My favorite ancient coin is probably this Eucratides, the first tetradrachma. Yes, in a little bit. Tell me about it, man. Uh, well, in all honesty, I just think it's a really pretty coin. Just like the design? This is uh, from the Kingdom of Bactria. This was actually an interesting uh, bit of history about this empire. This was formerly a piece of the Thank you. empire. Uh, whenever Alexander the Great conquered all the way to the east, uh, after his death, they divided his kingdom into five pieces. So uh, the Seleucids were one of those generals that uh, basically broke away and kind of started their own thing. That's cool, man. These guys broke away from the Seleucids. They're kind of like in the northeastern side next to Parthia. And uh, yeah, I just think it's a really cool coin. All these are super high relief. They have really interesting motifs on the back. This is actually Eupertides in war. It seems like a lot of the, the ancients are pretty small in yeah. comparison to this coin, you know? Yes. Yeah, I mean, one that's pretty comparable is probably this shekel. It's probably a little bit less in weight, but these are pretty cool. That's a shekel of tire. That's actually probably one of the more interesting coins that I have in here because this coin is supposedly the same type of coin that is talked about in the Bible. Judas Iscariot supposedly betrayed Jesus Christ for this coin. You know, that's kind of how the story goes. That was uh, last week that happened, didn't it? Eh, a couple in thousand history. years ago. A couple thousand years ago. <laughs> it was remembered, the remembrance of this last week. Yes. Right. Yes. So they think that that's possibly the coin that uh, he was given. Wow. The coin? Payment. That's the coin? Well, not the coin. <laughs> the type of coin. <laughs> That's wonderful, man. So this coin was actually probably in circulation around the time of Jesus as well. Wow. So that's a very interesting one. This one? Yeah. Yeah, that's a odd one. People look out for these, you know? You know what, you, is this kind of your best, your net on this one? Yeah. Okay, let me look into it real quick.
Thanks for letting me know, brother. I appreciate yeah, it. Sure. Let you get back to it. All right, guys. So we just got out of the show. We bought this 1928, as you guys saw. And I uh, was mainly there for conversation. was mainly there to kind of sell some coins. And uh, we ended up selling a few great coins that 79CC that we showed you earlier in this video. And so, uh, yeah, overall, good time to meet with people. Wasn't really that successful. A lot of the good stuff sold yesterday, unfortunately, but... It's the way it goes. You got to show up. If you don't go, you don't know. But thank you guys for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Make sure to leave a like, comment your thoughts on this video, and subscribe.